Previously on Channel News Asia Startup, seven aspiring startups were chosen to launch season four. The prize, up to half a million dollars in seed funding. Each week, the startups faced one stumbling block after another. Cavatella. Carol of Cavatella came out on top in the lift challenge in the second week and won immunity. Pickback had to say goodbye after falling flat in the industry veteran challenge. And a double elimination at the end of the 36-hour Stratathon saw amazing and delegate exiting the competition. Now the grand finale offers the top four one last chance to impress the judges with their ultimate pitch. Every startup dreams of having the next big idea, of becoming a unicorn, of making that perfect exit. But nine out of 10 startups fail before they're anywhere close. Against the odds, seven startups from around the world compete in a challenge of their lifetime. To clinch a deal from three top venture capitalists, who will emerge victorious? This is Startup Season 4. As a reward for successfully completing the 36-hour Stratathon, the final four are about to meet a special guest for a sumptuous breakfast at the Fullerton Bay Hotel. Well, morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to uh, Mentor's Breakfast. So my name's Kevin Gaskell. I spent the first 30 years of my life running big corporations. Uh, I was chief exec at Porsche. From there, I went to BMW. I had a great four or five years. From there, I walked away and I did what you ladies and gentlemen are doing now. I started my own dream, built some technology businesses, they became very successful. Hello, good morning. Hello. Decided to drop in and see how the breakfast session is going. Great. Okay, well, uh, sorry to interrupt your okay. breakfast, but I came to break some news. You are about to face your next and final challenge. In four hours' time, you will be making your final pitch to the judges. The rules are clear. Three minutes of presentation, followed by five minutes of Q&A. Got it? Well, finish up whatever you are about to eat because your time <laughs> starts now. <laughs> Guys, welcome. It is time for your final challenge. You've been through a number of challenges from the elevator pitch, the one-on-one -on -one session with industry veterans, to the 36-hour Stratathon. And now is the moment of truth. Are you ready for the final challenge? <laughs> okay, look over there. You'll see that space. That is where you will be making your final pitch. The judges have known you since day one. And this is your last chance to prove that you have what it takes to win their investment. This season, we're doing something that we've never done before. We've teamed up with Vostok VR, 360 virtual reality platform. So that is going to be filming you in 360 virtual reality. So as you can see from this tablet that I have here, your pitch is going to be filmed and that clip is yours to take home, to show to future investors. So there is something in it for everyone. You've got to give it your best shot. See you when your pitch is over. Good luck. Our Channel News Asia startup journey was, uh, was very exciting uh, because it gave us the opportunity to really drill down on our, our business. Uh, so it's been very enriching to us. And uh, we learned a lot on how to, to make it better. Um, Today, we want to give you five very convincing reasons why Passive Perform is going to be sustainably successful and a great investment for you. First and foremost, our team. Anna and I, we have more than 10 years of logistics experience. Secondly, we built a very, very scalable um, technology backbone with microservices in the cloud infrastructure. We use open source framework to be not dependent on any other providers. And we also use the latest technology stack. On top of that, we are a software as a service company with uh, very high gross margins. Can you help me understand more on the dynamics there? For example, you, know, you mentioned different types of potential exits. So I guess the power basically mainly lies in our data. They 
uh, basically um, not giving performance dashboards to their customers yet. And our solution will give the unique possibility for merchants to actually measure their carriers. So it's basically a pretty big change of the industry also from a carrier perspective. From our presentation, uh, of course, there you can always find uh, little things that uh, we could have done better. In terms of winning, I can't tell. There's so many great uh, businesses here. So we were confident that we have a business that's, that's worth investing in. Uh, the rest is up to the judges. When we come back, the final four go all out to impress the judges as the presentations go into full throttle. Based on the discussions we have over the last couple of weeks. It's the last leg of the competition as the startups make their final pitches. So far, we have heard from Parcel Perform. Parcel Perform is going to be sustainably successful and a great investment for you. Up next is Avis Health. The journey has been a very tough one to reach to the top four. And I feel that there's a lot of team here who are very strong in terms of communications and presenting their business plan. So. I think we do stand a chance, it might be small, but we'll go for it. For co-founders and former schoolmates, Edmund and Adrian, their startup journey began just five months ago when the duo, who are fresh out of school, founded Avis Health. So, Avis actually started earlier this year um, through a coffee chat with um, Professor Servi in NTU. So, this was actually a technology that was being researched and developed back in 2009 by Professor Sirwi and his team and was successfully patented in 2015. We started out this company because we found out that pediatricians out there has a lack of objective measurements when it comes to asthma diagnosis of kids. And this usually will cause uh, overprescription, can cause side effects. So this is where our device comes in to tackle these problems. The two who grew up in Singapore met while taking an entrepreneurship course in university. What happened is that there's one day he actually came to me and we, he shared about this idea with me. So I found that it's actually quite interesting on detecting asthma and it's very meaningful to, to be able to help the patients out there. From a very young age, Adrian had always wanted to run his own company and follow in his father's footsteps. My father is actually an entrepreneur. He single-handedly started his company back in 1982. It was actually a construction company. There were plenty of ups and downs. He conquered all these challenges that came ahead of him. And he is my inspiration. And that's why I started my company. I always have this thing that's running in my mind. The reason for you to work on the particular thing that you're doing. One is for happiness, and the other one is for a bigger reason. So first of all, I would like to say that I already have the very first factor, which is the happy part, and which is now coming to the second part, which is the purpose. In this case, is really to hope that we can push this product out so that it can better help the parents and ease off their worries. What's in front of you right now is actually a 36 months forward strategy for Avis Health. However, with your investment today, you'll be able to help Avis Health to go through clinical trial and to apply for multiple regulations in the market and shorten our time to the market. In this case here, you will allow us to go to launch in the market in Singapore within 16 months. In China, it will be able to launch by 24 months and America to launch by 36 months altogether. This business can take time, a bit, quite a bit of time to build up and it can cost quite a lot of money. Can you share what your funding strategy is? We're actually breaking our in capital into two stages. For the first year, we need $250,000 to do two things. Basically, a manpower as well as to develop the prototype into a commercial grade product with companies. For the second year, we need $750,000. Again, these are for manpower. But bulk of the money here actually for two things. Manufacture the equipments here, our bio asthma device to do clinical trial for later stage. And the second big bulk comes for clinic, um, the medical regulations. It has been a good experience so far. Uh, but today, I'm, I'm, I'm really disappointed about um, my performance in the team. Uh, no reason for that. Uh, could have done better. So basically, I will just wait and see what's going to happen next. And I hope I don't let my partner down as well. Actually, when I joined Slash, like my main goal was to make this show. And so when I actually did, I was so happy. And I guess we didn't really know what to expect, but it's been really fun working with everybody, all the different startups, as well as the CNA team. 
and I think we're gonna miss it. <laughs> we're actually good. <laughs> yeah. So I've talked a lot about Covatella and I've tried to address all of the elements needed for a successful startup. I've shared with you my vision of becoming the largest rental provider in the world without any inventory. I've also showed you our business model and how we're monetizing and how we're almost profitable and backed it up with a year's worth of growing revenues. We also have funding that we've raised 150K so far, but we need your help to bring our company to the next level so that we can hire more rock stars like Anastasia, build our technology and have marketing dollars to spend. Just a quick one on, you've raised 150 and you're, are you looking for, do you know how much you're looking for now or? Uh, we're targeting 400. We actually got advice uh, from Golden Gate guys that we should do a rolling round with safes. So that's what we're trying to do. The comments from the judges were very good. They said that we had a good pitch and they just asked several questions uh, to get more information about funding, etc. But the overall comment was that the pitch was very good. It seems like a long time since, uh, since we embarked on this whole journey. Um, it was definitely a very interesting journey that we have undertaken and uh, we learned a lot. It was a chance encounter halfway across the globe that laid the foundations for mobility company Simgo. We were actually on a trip to, to Barcelona and we met our co-founders. So we actually got together and immediately we asked them, so how are we going to set up a company together and let's go to the market. The reason why I joined Simgo is um, because in my previous company I was managing the mobility fleet of, a, um, of an MNC in Singapore and uh, I was basically suffering from the, the complexity of managing a large fleet of connected devices. Tobias was born and raised in a German town close to Cologne. After obtaining his bachelor's degree, he moved to Mannheim near Frankfurt to take up his master's. He was then offered an internship in Singapore where he met Kelvin. So when I spoke to Kelvin and he told me about the idea of Simgo, it didn't, didn't take me much to, to make up my mind and leave my old job and, uh, and join Simgo. Singapore national Kelvin's entrepreneurial journey began early when he was serving national service. At that point in time, in 3G or 4G is not really there. Uh, we actually started up the first business, which is actually setting up Wi-Fi hotspots in cafes, in uh, restaurants and things like that. Uh, that didn't turn out well, unfortunately. Undeterred by failure, Kelvin embarked on a second startup in Myanmar after completing his studies and spending a few years in the corporate world. 2002, I left my job and basically flew to Myanmar to explore business opportunities. We actually started off a voice trading business in Myanmar and that grew to be something really big. Kelvin thanks his family for support with his struggles as he moved from a comfortable job to set up Simgo. Everything suddenly became a struggle where in your old job you, have, you get a nice comfortable salary. So moving to a startup, of course, the, the challenges are there. When I uh, spoke to my parents about it the first time, um, I'm not sure if it's because they're German and a bit more conservative. There was certainly a bit of, what do you call it, suspiciousness. I had to convince them about the upsides and that it might not be just as stable as a, as a traditional company, but that it might be so much more rewarding in, in many other aspects. So based on the discussions we have over the last couple of weeks, what we have decided is two things. Simgo itself, we need to basically create a platform that helps our customers optimize all their telecommunication resources. And two, we need to create a software that allows my partners to very easily integrate as a software into their mobile devices, the ability to get our virtual SIM connection. We would also like to introduce to you SIMX. Because of our ability to dynamically assign a SIM card down to a device, we have created SIMX. What we could do with SIMX is to create on-demand mobile services and think about the concept that basically to an IoT provider today, they don't need to go and negotiate contracts at each individual country level, but basically through us, they can get globally connected at a very low cost. Where can I buy one of, one of that? Unfortunately, we are more of a uh, B2B, so you need to buy through our partners. Currently, we are going to launch this first in China, in Japan, then after that, we'll come down to Singapore and the rest of the countries. So you can get this at uh, probably one of the airports or basically through our partners. But we can work out a special deal for the judges for sure. <laughs> All right, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> I think it's hard to say what our chances of winning are at this point. Yeah. I think it could be any of the teams, really. After the break, it's a make or break moment as we unveil the results and find out who emerges victorious in Channel News Asia's Startup Season 4.
guys, you've had a long and nerve-wracking day, but guess what? Your final presentation is done, and the decision rests in the hands of the judges. It's that you guys are real survivors. We started out with seven finalists, and it's down to the top four. And I must say that all of you faced some of the toughest challenges that this show has ever experienced. So, job well done. Do enjoy this break because the judges are going to deliberate over the course of the next three days. And if they decide to invest in your startup, they're going to pay you a visit. So guys, really wish you the very best of luck. It's been three days since the startups presented their business case. During that time, the judges have been hard at work trying to decide which startups to invest in. From the start of the competition, some of the uh, contestants have not really found their stride. They were either not too clear on the strategy or they were not too clear on the expansion uh, and the go-to-market. So I think after all of the competition, especially the 36-hour challenge, I think many of them have grown. This year, the format is actually quite different from last year's format, so far as the startup is concerned. And we like the format this year because there's a lot of opportunity to really get to know the startup. So there's an opportunity for us to coach them. So I think the final four companies have been working extremely hard. They have also seen their own weaknesses. And some of them are you know, trying to fix it right away. Some of them have plans to eventually fix it. So I think so far so good. They are, they are, they are learning, they are listening. They are absorbing all, all the feedback that they have so far. After much deliberation, it is now time to announce the results. I think we're very looking forward to see who is coming. Hello, guys. Hi. How are you? <laughs> uh, you guys did an amazing job, but if I may convey what the judges told us. Overall, you had a great retail business model, but that didn't necessarily translate online. And when they delved into your technical expertise, whether you had the technology to broaden your horizons online, they thought that this was lacking. They loved the hustle. They thought you guys did a fantastic job. But in the end, they had to make up their mind. Your startup journey is far from over. <laughs> and I am sure that a lot of amazing things are going to happen. And this is just the beginning. Thank you. Thanks. It's a great experience, really mm -hmm. invaluable. I mean, we feel like winners are already just being on the show and making it this far. Well, we're definitely disappointed with the results because we obviously wanted to win. But at the same time, I feel that this is just the beginning for us. And I always kind of compare fundraising to dating and not every investor is going to be a good fit for us. And that's OK. But I think that once we do find investors that are a good fit for us, then we're going to make sure that they don't regret it because we are definitely going to charge <laughs> forward and make sure this is successful. Yeah. Hi there. Morning. Morning. Welcome to our office. So, Kwan has something for you guys. Okay. Wonderful. Care to guess what this may be? Well, our term sheet. Well, it's more than a term sheet. It's a culmination of all the hard work that everyone here in the team has uh, displayed. We're uh, very impressed. So, uh, Jeffrey and myself here have uh, decided that we want to uh, offer a term sheet as a basis of our uh, discussions going forward. We're very excited about the opportunity. So anything to add, yeah. Jeffrey? <laughs> we made it. We made it. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> All this hard work, yeah? yeah? <laughs> so Great. cool. We're awesome. so happy. Right? Yeah. Couldn't be any better. We are so excited. We are really amazed, extremely happy. Also to, to Jeff and Quan to see them stepping out of the elevator, that was like, 
such a cool moment. Um, so that's going to be a very, very special memory for us as well. We are currently waiting for the result uh, while, we are waiting, while we are doing our normal daily job. Halfway through, the crew starts to come in and currently we are feeling extremely nervous on the result because we have no idea who is coming in. So we are keeping our fingers crossed. We are really hoping that we can get a term sheet, but uh, we don't want to bet. No, I don't jinx myself, you see. <laughs> uh, I'm really hoping that we can get a term sheet. It's really a validation of your idea that as an investor, we believe that uh, you have a good chance of making it. And also clearly, I think through that period of working with you, I think you have that capability and that potential to actually make that idea a success. So this is a term sheet and investment from Red Dog Venture into your new baby. Really been a long path. It wasn't a, an easy path, but it was definitely a fruitful one. Didn't, didn't realise that we actually came so far. We really want to take this opportunity to thank Prof Sawi. I think without him, there wouldn't be the existence of this product. Okay, so the um, thing that's happening now is that the, the team just came over and set up all the cameras here and uh, yeah, they're all very secretive about it, um, so I have no idea what's actually happening or who is coming to visit us, whether that's good or bad news. So obviously that's what's on my mind, thinking about that, who could it be? Hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> okay, I know that you were hoping for somebody else. Okay, so here's the deal. It's all, it's not that bad. First of all, Stimgo, you guys had a phenomenal run. You were the most advanced among all the finalists in terms of your revenue and market validation. Yep. You were looking for three to five million US dollars, which is a Series A investment. Some of the judges, they're at seed level, not all. Yeah. Your journey is far from over because the judges want some more time. They want to get to know the founders more and better. So you know what? I want to give you a hug. <laughs> Noto and Yuhi would have been very happy to see you, but not today. I'm going to continue looking for funding, probably try to re-engage with the judges and uh, just share a little bit about the founding team with them and uh, maybe make them visit uh, Israel at some point. And usually uh, with the food there and seeing the country, maybe we can change the mind. We're here at the working capital. This is a place where people meet up and start up. A warm welcome to you all. This show has served as sort of a love book. <laughs> Carol and I were always uh, like really close to each other. I was like... Actually, one of the worst actors and actresses I've ever seen. 